So how do we trade? Bartering is, is determined by supply and demand. Just like cash. I mean, we buy cat, we buy things that are abundant, but there's a lot of control placed on the economy. So we want to see, you know, we want to be able to trade ourselves outside of government control. Somewhere in here, I probably say it, but I, I will mention that. The IRS expects us to report our bartering value. <laughs> I forgot. That's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, cash was invented to make uh, transaction easier. It's, I mean, cash is a great way to trade. Yeah. And it's, it's valuable, it's good. But when, once we lose control of it. Cash today has no value. You know, it, is, it, it is a fiat currency. All right, so why? Why are we going to barter? Like I said, we're headed towards a cashless society, and a cashless society is a controlled society. It might just be something you'd like to do. I do it all the time. Um, I trade classes for all kinds of stuff. I just trade caches for a load of uh, fertilizer. I just trade um, another class for, um, I'll go through some of the, some of the examples. So the idea of an alternate economy is that we can produce things and trade them without cash, without government intervention. I mean, if they take away the cash, that's gonna be how it's done. Like I said, you can only, you can only uh, use debit cards in a number of places. They're refusing cash. <laughs> which just astonishes me. Hey guys, we have a seat, we have heat seats, heated seats, and we have cooler seats. Um, <clears throat> home production of food, clothing, ammo, give us the ability to feed, clothe, and protect our families. I mean, that's a pretty simple statement, right? If we can produce our own and trade for others, that's a good thing, I think. I'm not, I'm not so opposed to that. So value of the product is determined by who needs the goods the most. I mean, if I have, I'll give you a picture. The idea is that you have freedom. Capital society is a controlled society. A barter society is a free society. I hope that makes sense. So here are some simple examples. Let's say I have a garden and I have enough corn you know, that I have three extra bushels that I won't eat. You have uh, a condition that needs an antibiotic that I have. So we negotiate a simple trade. It's really easy. One person needs this, another person needs this, and we negotiate a simple trade. It gets harder when we, when we have a more complex trades. So here's an example. Person A has corn, wants toilet paper, does not have batteries. 
that makes sense. Person B has toilet, toilet paper and wants batteries, but not corn. Person C has batteries and needs corn, but not TP. So does person B is desperate for C's batteries, but, will only butter, but C will only butter for corn, so he has to go to A and trade corn for toilet paper, and then he has uh, Yeah, he has the uh, person C gets the batteries or gives B the batteries for toilet paper. So B finds A who is willing to trade B's TP. Finally, B trades his new corn for C's batteries. Everybody's happy. Except the government. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem I is. <clears throat> The problem is with these complex trades is you got to find the people that are doing. It. And so part of the part of the process of complex trades is creating a system for advertising what you're doing. We have uh, diamond. We have up here we have Diamond Valley friends, and that can easily be used to state what's um, what we have in abundance. <coughs> Yeah, I'm talking about right now. Yeah, we're getting to the point where um, we're going to have to go private on this. So, what are you going to trade? This requires creativity. You got to go through your your stuff and look for things that you don't ever use. Go through the boxes in your garage that have, you haven't opened in five years and see what's there. And you can do what one person in the street does, and that's stockpile bar records. This woman has an amazing stockpile ready to trade. So um, we're talking about, you know, kind of right now situation. But when we get to grid down, we're going to have to not use technology. Give you an example of how to do that. So, what are you going to trade? What have you got that's of value? You might have books. I have a huge library of survival books, way more than I'll ever use. I'd trade those, pretty much know the content. Who would want some of that? Anybody here? Anybody here interested in books? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It also is that your services too. I and mean, if we have a tiller and, and you don't have a tiller, we're getting there. Garden, till. We're getting there. That's the next. That's the next phase. So this is just the stuff that you can get rid of. Board games. A lot of people. If, if, if the economy crashes, especially, we'd be very interested in having board games mm -hmm. um, and puzzles. We've, you know, I mean, let's say we lose TV, lose the internet. What are you going to do with your kids when they can't play Xbox or your grandkids? I have a template made, and I'm just going to cut out the print and cut out these templates so they can hold them and pretend to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, alternatively, we're going to barter. Clothing is a great barter item, especially with families with young children who will, over time, um, you know, they'll not be. Younger kids will outgrow, <coughs> and the older kids will uh, inherit. And then, or if you don't have older kids, you have younger kids' clothes that you can trade. I mean, there's just a, 
a lot of clothing that can be traded. I'll be honest with you. I have, I'm a collector of t-shirts. I have t-shirts from every military unit I trained with, from every, I, I have tons of t-shirts. I could trade a lot of them. I have more pants than I need. My weight has been fluctuating. So I have some that I have to get rid of and some that I need to get. That will be good. Coats, right? Winter clothing bar. What do you have for barter clothing wise? Shoes. Mm hmm. Yeah. You need to, if you know some non Mormons, you got alcohol and, uh, and coffee. I haven't put that on there, but I thought about it. But that's true. Isn't that what the military used cigarettes? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they gave all the GIs cigarettes, and uh, they they bartered cigarettes and chocolate. Hershey's bars. So um, clothes are a good thing. Jewelry, you know, when you're hungry. What good is that jewelry? It might have value that someone else would want. I think so. I don't have any, but musical instruments. I'm thinking, you, you notice there's a trend here about entertainment. <laughs> People will be bored. So um, they'll, they'll want to be able to play music. So a guitar. I get a lot of money for a guitar. What musical instruments do you guys have that you think might be valuable to trade? <laughs> accordion would probably not get much. <laughs> I used to I play know. one. I'd love to have an accordion again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, and so I say musical instruments, but when we get to the services portion, musical training, you can offer classes on music. But, you know, guitars, uh, pianos, those will be the big thing, probably. Things that don't need a lot of power. Old sporting goods. I have a kayak in the back of my yard that I never, I'm never going to use. The news, I have six bikes that I'd like to get rid of, you know? I have so much camping. Holy cow. I, I could, think they are. Hmm? I think they are. Yeah. So, um, you know, there'll be people who want a big tent. I happen to have a couple of those, so I don't need them all. Furniture. Non furniture I have. I mean, you can you can always make trades for furniture. I like to go on. I like to go on uh, uh, Facebook shopping marketplace and just look and see what people are buying and selling. It, it helps me think about what would be useful. Extra tools. I have probably three or four drills. And I probably would be able to get by with one or two. I have a large food storage in my house. And the purpose of keeping that is that <laughs> I have a lot of extra food for barter. In the bucket of wheat. Come see me. But there's a uh, canned food. And, um, yeah, I have a lot. And so I, I have intentionally have stored a lot so that I can barter with. Someone comes to my door hungry, 
they can come in and do some work and I'll give them food. Nobody eats for free. You know, I, I don't give away the food, but I'll certainly give you food for, for services for work. Right. I have always got firewood that needs to be cut. We always have, you know, there's always work around the house that needs to be done. So, um, extra food. So, produce. We are going to go into an agricultural society when the time comes, when, when there's no more cash. So, what are you going to do? I mean, you know how to garden, you have a garden spot, you have fertilizer, you have seed. <laughs> you have tools. You know, what do you need to do to garden? Do you, have, do you garden now? It's probably a good idea to do garden now. It's pretty hard. Park, you have a big garden. And, uh, you know, uh, Sandra, you guys have a garden. I mean, a lot of people around have a garden. You now, if you're living in the city, that means like digging up your lawn, your backyard, and getting getting things ready to go. But um, it's a uh, you're going to have to, and you're going to have to grow a lot. I would recommend that you store heirloom seeds. Heirloom seeds are seeds that will reproduce. They're not GMO and modified and everything else. So those seeds are gonna be uh, what I use in the garden, the fertilizer and the tools. And uh, somebody with a tiller that we talked about, um, people will trade for unused appliances if there's still power. Right? I, I, mean, I don't have any unused appliances. Well, I'm talking about kitchen appliances. That air dryer, toaster oven, yeah, it's okay. I can get by with my range. You know, there's stuff that have a I have a I have a bread maker. My dad. I have a, a juicer. I have a use a juicer and So you know, there's a there's a. We'll talk about this in a minute. But what you need to do is as you as you think about bartering, you need to inventory it. One of the things I'm very cautious about is treating guns as weapons. That they will be in high demand and they require that you be extremely careful. For example, I say don't trade guns and ammo together. <laughs> you hand the guy a gun, he blows it and shoots you. So um, trade in a secure environment, by that I mean you might have a couple of guys there running, <coughs> providing security uh, and overwatch. It's just a dangerous thing. Trade away only the things you don't use. I have a couple of throwaway guns, but 303 Enfield. Not a very good gun. Not going to trade away an AR. Right? That's not going to happen. But I never, I, I haven't shot that thing in 20 years. And uh, in terms of, of uh, other, you know, other guns, there's, I have a bunch of guns, but they're, they're not getting traded. But I have some guns that are what I would call barter guns. So if you have 
have the opportunity to get the barter guys and then, and then trade out you know, Be knowledge about be knowledgeable about the guns and weapons. Make sure that you can function test them. That if you trade gun for gun, that you're getting a functional gun, and make sure your guns are functional too. It's really important that well, we'll talk about the ethics here. Uh, avoid sketchy guns. Avoid sketchy dudes, sketchy people. You know, who who would you not want to trade with? A biker, a drug dealer, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I mean, so you think about it, and you think about who would you trade with? I prefer to trade with people I know. People in the neighborhood. People. I mean, that's. That's the idea, people that you know. But um, if you're trading with someone you don't know, it's hit, and, hit or miss, especially if you're trading. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I say you got to have a security team with you because uh, you don't want to miss that. Um, yeah, I said do function tests. And the guns you are trading, make sure the guns you are trading work. Then do function tests if you can on the guns you're trying to trade for. I don't honestly see any trading for guns. I don't need more guns. But there will be people who say <clears throat> at the last minute, oh my gosh, I don't have a shotgun. <clears throat> So, you know, just be just be careful. I mean, it's just a matter of being cautious. Now, let's talk about trades of service. Your time and your skills are tradable. So, this is where you make an inventory. What are you good at? You know, what what is, you know, hobbies are a good place to start. You know, I, I have, uh, what are you good at? Do you have skills? What? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So make an inventory of what you do. And then here's some examples. Are you a good mechanic? Anybody here a Shade Tree mechanic? Used to be so you don't want electrical. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. I, I have an old Jeep just for that reason. You know, that's that Jeep was designed to ruin, but um, chauffeuring. I have a friend that lives in Iowa, and that's his only job. He, he lives among the Amish, and they can't drive, but they can hire him to drive. Well, he makes his living driving. Um, so, you know, chauffeuring might be good. You might be able to do an exchange. Can you take my kids to school? I'll pick them up. You know, that kind of service exchange is going to be really important. Maybe you're good at house cleaning. You can barter house cleaning for some other some good, maybe some for food or something. I don't, I'm not a good house cleaner. I don't like house cleaning. Consequently, I don't do it very well. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, but I know people that are really good at it and would be willing to trade for stuff that I have. Anybody expert in computer repair or computer you know, can you take the back off of a Macintosh and you know, reset the memory, anything like that? That's a, that's a good skill to learn. Certainly going to be tradable at first. Dog grooming? 
Anybody here a dog groomer? I got a friend that's a dog groomer and she will she will do really well because everybody's gonna keep their dog. Speaking of dogs, people ask me all the time, if you were hungry enough, would you eat your dog? The answer is no, but I'll eat you. No, but I'll eat yours. <laughs> <clears throat> cutting hair. You bring know how to style hair? That will be that will be a really tradable skill. I mean I I can do it myself with the I mean, that's about as good as it gets, but I can put it into a ponytail. Yeah. Grow up all it. So being able to cut hair is going to be that's going to be very useful. Yard work. I'm too old and feeble to get out and do the yard work, but I sure trade for somebody to do it, especially to pull goat heads. <laughs> right? Anybody have goat heads? Uh, and you mentioned sewing, quilting, you know, that's a very good hobby because you can, you can certainly market that. Um, I need, if I grow a big garden, I'm going to need help in the garden weeding, and sewing and watering and stuff like that. And I'd be willing to trade people for that. I didn't mention it, but you know, when things get tough, I'm, I'm going to be ha having to probably barter for firewood. I mean, so far, people have been very generous up here at Clark and uh, kept me in, in firewood, but at some point, that might not be possible. I mentioned music lessons. I had mentioned that earlier. You know how to play the accordion? You want to learn? You got something she wants, there you go. Anybody here a piano teacher or pian play piano well? Yeah, that's, that's it. So you, you got to have some, we have a number of piano players up here. And I'm sure they will be willing to trade for, um, Whatever, you know, what that there we go with the trades. Um, I mentioned firearm stream. I, I mean, there's so many examples of service that you could. I what I want to do is just have you guys. I, I mentioned firearms training because a lot of people will want to be able to be proficient with a weapon, especially if things get a little crazy. So if you have the ability to train someone in firearms, you'll be a popular guy. I think if you had about five or six single shot 22 rifles and a box ammunition to go with each one, it'd be excellent. You could barter for something. That, yeah, I does the fact I have that. You I figure have, all your Democrats won't know how to shoot. I have yeah. spare guns. <laughs> And I mean, I have extra, I have five 1022s. Yeah. And so I can trade those easily. I mean, they're just. The, the limitation is the ammunition. Yeah. Because you yeah. probably won't be able to, they won't be selling ammunition. But no. you'll be trading for it. So you've got a stockpile. I mean, I have a very large stockpile. Of, 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 I'll talk about that. Let's talk about just a, 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 for a second. What do I have? Um, in terms of ammo, I stockpile ammo for the guns that I have, mm -hmm. and I stockpile a lot of it. I don't care much for. I have a few <coughs> boxes of other other ammo that doesn't fit my guns, and those are my barter. 
you got a 243 or 270 all three different nine millimeter yeah you know? so but i think the training is going to be a big thing. i think your ability to go out and and uh set up a range and have people come over and train it'll be good i have a number of friends that are very proficient firearm fans, and they'd be willing to trade for sure it's a question if we are locked down in our community mm -hmm. um yes we'll be bartering within our community but won't we also establish like groups I don't want to learn how to fire a weapon. I hope I never have to do that right. because there's enough other people, but I hope that I would be in the kitchen preparing food. Yeah. Or I you, think we will create Do you a remember society. the community organizing um, thing I did? Uh -huh. <laughs> No, yeah, no, not the Obama kind. I did one on how to organize a community mm -hmm. like ours. Yeah. And it, it includes inventorying people's skill set and assigning them to or having them volunteer to work in a the group. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out here who should never shoot a gun at a person. It would destroy them. There are other people who won't have any problem with that. And so we'll, we'll group according to, to the, to the skill set. So uh, we have master gardening, several of master gardeners in the valley. And uh, really well trained. So the, uh, the, the training can be anything and so i'm going to just throw it out there and say what skills do you think you would like to learn or that you have what do you have what what can you do anybody a nurse or a medical person there's a tradable skill as everyone knows in here i can teach what plants will rebuild or kill the body yes and that's a good example. And if the, there's no more cash, then you'll be holding classes for whatever you need. I mean, I think that's true. Um, we have some survival experts. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they, they, they are very. <laughs> yeah, you fixed mine. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> those are very valuable skills if we're locked down. I do have a problem with a decent library on all kinds of things, like uh, making your own clay uh, ovens, how to do primitive pottery and fire it. Yeah. Yeah, see, I got a lot of those too. I got, I got a five mm -hmm. book on those kinds of things that are uh, maybe a skill that we haven't thought about uh, the, because we don't need it yet. You and I, uh, the three of us, have a ton of primitive skill background. Yeah, we can we can go out and survive on our own without a whole lot of help. And thank you for bringing us along with you. <laughs> yeah, um, you realize how much. In the desert, right? <laughs> We're gonna be able to <laughs> if we have to leave, there's like maybe four people going on. No, the I, have, I have food in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the foods out here that I use in survival training is, is uh, uh, oh crap, it'll come to me. Brigham tea. Yeah, Brigham's tea is good, but um, this is cactus. Uh, what are the flat cactuses? Tricky bear. Yeah, I did a TV show with Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, I fed him prickly bear. <laughs> I've eaten it. I don't care for it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we burned 
I yeah. didn't spend it. But, you know, he ate it and said, Jack said, well, I could eat this. His son, Ozzy said, I think I'm going to starve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Is is and, and see we're getting there. So these are service examples. Really important is that you be an ethical trader. That um, tendency to gouge will be astronomical. I mean, people will be gouging everywhere. Yeah, and um, your reputation will follow. So. It might take some kind of arbitrator uh, to make sure that the deal is fair. Hmm? Do you see some kind of block possibly? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're just thinking ahead, but. You're so smart. <laughs> flea markets. You know, we have a community flea market. Everybody brings their stuff out on Saturday morning. Sets up a table and the trading begins. Might be access food, might be anything. I mean, you know, the, the sky's the limit. What did you find in your garage? You know, did you find anything in your garage? Have you got anything in those boxes you don't need? So, can I make a point? Mm -hmm. So, one of our, was it Barb? <laughs> who came up with the idea of creating a map, not just an inventory, but a map of where your stuff is, like in your garage. So I never really thought about that because ours is like the Indiana Jones, <laughs> you know, cavern of artifacts. And um, we have a lot of stuff, but the map on top of the inventory, I thought was a brilliant idea, Barb, Figure that out. Yeah. I'm sure other people have done it. But I'll tell you why. Everything you possibly need to get sick. If you were sick, we talked about it. And I ended up with a really nasty case of the flu, which people called something else. But I considered it to be the flu. It lasted quite a long time. No, I couldn't find a lot of the things that I needed because I was so sick. I'm the only one in the house that really knew where things were. So since then, we have pulled out multiple boxes of all kinds of stuff that had all kinds of, well, they were labeled, which you know where they were. Yeah, <laughs> so you inventory it, basically. Inventory it, and now we have a map that says, you know, this is what's under this bed, and this is what's under this I mean, I have some of the craziest stuff in my, okay. in my garage. That when I lived in New Jersey, I lived near the shore, I had to be selling it. I have a desalinator in my garage. What am I going to do with that? You know, that's a barter item for someone. Yeah. But, the, but the worst part was, so Kevin knows where a lot of the stuff is in our garage. And he said to me, okay, go out there and it's in this row. And I think it's on this shelf and it's in this big box. It was a nightmare. And I kept coming back saying, it's not there. I can't find it. Yes, it is. And so when Barb said this, I thought that is exactly what we need because not everybody's going to be healthy all the time and go out and find stuff, or you're going to be in a panic to find something. Yeah, it's I'm, just a brilliant idea. I, I need to I need to do a map of my medical. Yes, yes. Well, it even happened today at the store. My mm -hmm. husband said, "I want you to go pick up these two items at Lowe's." So he texted me the pictures and he showed me in the picture. See right here at the bottom, it tells you what aisle they're on and what section of the aisle. I walked into that store, I pulled it up, <laughs> aisle 63. Well, this is up to 20. Oh, I bet it's in the front of the store. There was 63. It's on an end cap. I walked around. There it was. Mm. It was so fast to go through that store and get the two little items that were this big. Yeah, and how many people have that too? Yeah. If it's updated. <laughs> <laughs> they were there. Every day, worst of I like to wander the aisles. 
is I, I pick up a lot of ideas that way. Well, and, and, and two, what's sad is if somebody <coughs> says, do you have any of these? And you say, yes, I do. But now you can't find it. And so the person tries to find it somewhere else. But later, days later, you come across it. That's just, that's not helpful yeah. to have stuff and so, then not access it. Let's get back to flea markets. Let's say a, a kind of a co-op type thing where you Saturday morning you set up uh, in the here, you know, the park here or inside in the winter, and people bring their barter items and people basically just barter stuff away. Um, but barter or, or access. I'd like to share. It was years ago, more than 10 years ago, I got invited to a, it was an exchange, but it was more of an auction. They said, okay, bring something that you want to auction. So we all gathered in this group and then they gave us each an imaginary amount. Let's say, okay, you get 500 make up a name okay and we're going to use that to exchange everything in the room and so i think i brought i don't even remember okay. but i left i entered the room with items that i didn't care about that i found in my home and i left with some almonds and some bread and I mean, I was thrilled. It, it was so fun. And the idea was to gather weekly mm -hmm. and you use this imaginary money that supposedly was worth about 50 cents. So then you you could guess, okay, that's maybe worth $10. So I'm going to offer you 20 items, you know, entities. And yeah. It was way fun. I think yeah, we should that, do it. That, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, a, just a place where people can bring their goods and barter. We should practice. I agree. We <laughs> used to have a good gun voucher. Now, but uh, we were out of business. I bought a lot of stuff, which I'm willing to trade off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so we have, I mean, the valley here is is encapsulated, but you know we can certainly use the same advertising chain that we need for this to let you know when we're going to do this. And I don't know. I mean, I think it's a good idea to kind of come up with a, a system for. That's a this an ideal system though, where you can go do that. You take that one city that they were surrounded for a year and nothing went in, nothing went out, there was no lights and everything like that. The people had a park place where you could go. If you could get there, you went at night and hope that you didn't get shot on the way. And you get in there and you could trade something valuable for a moxicillin or something you had to have for someone who was dying. Mm -hmm. Was that was that in the United States? What was that? No. Was that here in the U.S.? No, no. It was in Serbia or somewhere like that. Recommended. Anyway, the whole thing is the thing that happened where the people went through it. But can you imagine the town was surrounded, and then every tree was cut down within a couple months for wood because it's freezing there. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep no electricity, right? And uh, bartering. Uh, the one guy. He had stuff that he could pour in a cigarette lighter and get it going again, which was valuable to him to, to start fires. Mm -hmm. And everybody had their own little thing if you could get to them and do it. But I mean, and at night, they had people at night guarding the place. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's, it's going to be one of those things where you have to provide security for the, you know, here it would be security for the valley. But um, I think. This is this is a really good way to involve other people. You might end up doing complex trades all day. You go in with a list of what you have and what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
this might be the time to bring up the fact that so our our kids who are younger and cooler and hipper um, do things on all these different apps and there's so many barter apps swap apps free things for free stuff and you can go on and just put in best barter apps and so there's so much going on online now yeah it'll go away but yeah. <coughs> How many substations have been attacked lately? Yeah, that's true. And, um, and sooner or later, someone's going to knock down the tower. And I think once we get to that point that we're actually having our, you're not going to want to put anything out there that can be traced or right. you know, yeah. that's the downside is the information on these apps is not. But they're trading right. for game consoles. And oh, okay. right. I'm not buying weapons that way. Kevin, one of the things you mentioned was security. Yeah. Because I think that's going to be a real part of those hardware that's still. Yeah. It's also going to be, you know, for people that, you know, if you've got a garden, somebody's going to have to be watching that. Maybe yeah, that's seconds. a good example. And if you advertise your somebody from one to three. Yeah. So, you know, in the community organization thing that we did, we talked about setting up teams at the at the entrance to the to the town, to the township that would um, <clears throat> very carefully filter who comes in and who goes out. And uh, I think that's gonna be, you know, one of the keys to the security. And then they'll, they'll have to be security to the market. And that's what they did in Louisiana. They, I remember hearing a story about the police going up to a community and they had their barricades, barricades and the police are like, okay, I think you guys are okay. Yeah. And they went, kept going because we had the community an had already organized. We had our, um, yeah, I, I probably should. Don't tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> if he says I probably shouldn't, then he. <laughs> In New Orleans, um, after Ivan, no, Katrina's the first one, this is the second. Um, and we were protecting the power grid. And so, we had to some kind of removal. We sent a team out to try and get gas. And they came to a barricade in the city street, you know, cars and mattresses, whatever they could block it with. And sitting behind the barricade were three Korean War veterans. Mm -hmm. Across the street was a dead body. Hmm. <clears throat> and uh, he said, hey, are you guys okay? What do you need? They said, don't take our gun, please. Man, we'll get you some ammo. What do you want? So we need 30 out six. I said, okay. We went back to <laughs> supply depot and we got a case of 30 odd seconds back. Mm -hmm. Three <clears throat> octogenarians protecting their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, Kev? Yeah. I thought of something that uh, this is something I've thought of through the years is that people could trade not cooking services. Mm -hmm. So when I lived in Guatemala, we did not cook our own food. We would go to a place and we paid somebody for a month to cook our, our food. Yeah. And it just might be work scale wise for a lot of people to figure out how to do that. Yeah. And, and there I, are people in here who really good look. I know I've how to eaten their quality. food. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
That's, yeah, I mean, my friend Jerry's idea was to have several cases of top ramen and uh, in a baggie with uh, a bunch of vitamins. And when people come to the door and they don't want to work, put them on their way. You got a meal. That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best we can do. Top ramen has a definite storage line. It's nasty. <laughs> well, you know, it's like eat rancid food or starve. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just joking here, but you know, ramen is. Not good for you. Well, I think our understanding of food is evolving. Like we have stored things that now we go, oh, that's probably not the best. And so. Yeah, like I have several hundred pounds of sugar. That's bar. I'm not eating sugar. I'm <laughs> diabetic. Hmm? Take the chunk of it off and yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in my storage that I started ten years ago that I can't eat. Um, I was going to tell you it's seven thirty. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to give you <coughs> some statement. Get started. Um, with simple trade, trades. Find someone in the neighborhood who needs something and offer to trade in for something. Just get, just do it. So I own a store. I have the doTERRA essential oils. Mm -hmm. And I tell people I can get anything I want if they'll take oils in trade. And I get all sorts of stuff. Same thing. I would say probably. Uh, two thirds of the guns I own were borrowed for classes. They want, they want to take classes, they got an extra gun, something I want. Yeah. And so we did look up that the IRS expects you to report yeah. the uh, traded. I'll get right back to you on that. So, of course, we're law abiding. Yes, just to <laughs> add that note. Well, when a cashless society arrives, you'll be ready because you've done it, you've thought about it, and you've even maybe even prepared for it, and uh, well, you can proceed. <laughs> Do you know, um, I was thinking about this too, who's really good at trading and barter are kids. Kids do it at school, they do it among their friends. Pokemon cards. Yes, yeah. they are good at bartering and trading and they, they find it very exciting. So yeah. they could, uh, you could put them on the test, figuring stuff out. There you go. Yeah. I, I'm going to say kids are a good trader. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, rendezvous last year mm -hmm. where uh, a kid wanted a certain item, but he knew he didn't have enough for it. So he found one little trinket that I guess his dad or his grandpa or somebody let him have it. And then he just went from place to place. And he said, do you have anything a little bit better than this? Because I'm trying to get this. And I just need to do a whole bunch of trades to get to where I can create a guide for this particular item and he got it he made it by the end of the day That's he cool. traded enough times and got something there's a, a, there's a story i think fantastic. it's an internet story that i'm not sure about a guy who traded started off with a paper clip yeah and yeah. ended up with a house right i heard that it was a tv series for a long time and a partner that's what they did for a living. Yeah. We started out with an item, whatever it had to be, on somebody that had something that, that they didn't want or need. 
And it was a little better than what they had. And they just get three and that. No. It's crazy. Kevin, I, yeah. we were talking about the fact that um, people we know needed uh, kidney transplants. And so instead of waiting on a long list, if they could figure out complex trades between a whole bunch of people who matched in various configurations, then it was a go for all those kidney transplants to have happen simultaneously, the donations and the recipients. But, you know, it wasn't always a match with the direct family member. And so it had to be among like many people and talk about complexity. And there were times that one person couldn't do it for whatever reason, it, the whole complex trade was off. Mm -hmm. And um, you realize this is such a valuable tool if we understand it, but we don't really have a super clear understanding because we don't do it on a regular basis. Some people do, yeah. but most of us don't. So, yeah. Gold and silver on the part of Yeah. Um, when cash goes away, gold and silver will be a very valuable trading medium. Oh, what was it you just brought? Oh, Kevin, what was it that I just brought home from a luncheon that a friend gave each gold one of buck. us a gold buck from the gold ore store? And it's a gold certificate in laminated paper, and it's got this beautiful design. It's from what it said, it has gold. Wyoming. And Kevin was saying that, that as people find and understand, those will become more valuable as people understand what to do with them. So based on the price of gold, because they will go up in price um, or down. But so I have, just in <clears throat> we're out of time and I appreciate your patience, but I have, uh, <coughs> tried to accumulate some of that. And not doing very well with it because I don't have a lot of spare. But uh, you know that's going to be a trading medium for a while until food runs out, and then and then it will not have any value. Yeah, I, that's the, the goods and the goods and the services. The hard items are the key to uh, to bartering. So I mean. <clears throat> well, I hope you've learned something. Uh, I hope it, it's been worth your time. It's finally getting warm in here. We'll turn the heaters off, mm -hmm. put the chairs away, and head out. Bring out the so is that, that the last picture you're going to show us? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So can we schedule a time where we bring something and play this game? We should. I'd be up for it. Yeah, let's just pick a, a, a day or a Saturday or a time and then just play the game. We could do it with the, the artificial money that Sandra was talking about, just so people feel like there's an exchange um, to get into the groove of doing that. Yeah. So you bring something yes. of value, you leave with something of value. Yeah, I mean, I went several times, not just one time. Mm -hmm. And depending on who's there in the group, what they bring and what's appreciated because it's on an auction. Okay, this is the item available. What are you willing to pay for it? Yeah. 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 All right, we'll, we'll think about organizing that. I <clears throat> sure that. Yes, Sandra. I'm sure that Sandra can remember and knows the rules and so forth. All right. Well, thank you guys for attending. I hope it was, I hope there was something here that you learned that you didn't know and, or some ideas for what to do and how to do it. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep.